What's good gamers and folks, it's your ace Terrence the Gamer here and welcome to the first episode of My Fighting Game Lifetime. This series is about the fighting games I have played from when I was a child until the man I am today. The fighting game genre has always been my number one genre in gaming from the days of the arcade until now. I will discuss the games from the times I experienced them in my life, not when the games were released, so I'll be using a lot of my brain power to remember the time. So let's get started with the early years. My first fighting game experiences were when I was about 10 years old in the place of my birth, Belle Glade, Florida, known as the Muck City, home of Sugar King, really bad crime, and of course, Glade Central High School, which produced quite a few college and NFL football players. I lived in a housing complex known back then as Palm Glades Apartments, as I'm showing you here on Google Earth. I think it's called Glades Glen now. The complex had a local arcade slash pool hall right here with all the popular arcade games at the time, mostly beat em ups. Golden Axe, Double Dragon, Superman, Bad Dudes, NASTAR Warriors. This was the era of the quarter eater. These games were of course designed and programmed to take your money, two credits to play, one credit to continue. Some of these games did have a one on one mode, but of course not really a fighting game. And also, this is the time when the NES was out, of course, and the NES did have ports of some of these games, like Double Dragon. It had that one-on-one -on -one fighting mode, but that's not really a fighting game. We didn't have no fighting games in this arcade, okay? My mom would get mad at me. Every time she gave me money, I would go to the arcade and spend it. Oh, man, she would get so mad at me. She would really, really get mad at me. Eventually, the arcade got Street Fighter, and it was love at first sight for me. The graphics, the special moves, and the different characters really had me and my childhood friends and them. We went crazy for this game. Ken was the first character I played with, and it was awesome. Performing the Hadouken for the first time with them sticks against your friends and other people was just the best thing ever. Even more so once I learned to do the Dragon Punch and the Hurricane Kick. Try, always trying to complete the game with at least two quarters was always a thrill. It was better once Street Fighter Champion Edition came in. We got to play with the four boss characters. My boss character always growing up was Vega. He was my guy with the claws, okay? I always made people mad when I used to do his moves, especially, you know, jumping off the side of the wall and hitting him with that Azuna drop. Street Fighter was just... It came out and just changed our world into fighting games. Okay, just pushed us into fighting games. Me and my friends growing up as a kid. Okay, just this was the game that got us, me, into fighting games. All right. Mortal Kombat was the next fighter that came to the arcade. Okay, digitized, bloody, gory, and really, really fun. This is a game that's primarily responsible for the rating system that games have now. Back then, there was no rating system. You know, some parents didn't care about really gaming like that too much until Mortal Kombat came out, okay? All the characters were pretty good. You got the ninjas, god, monsters, and others. These, the special moves was great. Throwing an ice ball, hitting with the lightning, the spear, Johnny Cage's moves. It was just... Fantastic, okay. Everybody was always trying to uppercut each other. That was the most popular attack in Mortal Kombat. And the fatalities were over the top at the time. We would have to look through like game magazines to learn them all on the side of the arcade cabinet, okay? Of course, like I said, this game was parents were upset when this game came out so much in the upper cultures, but in our little hometown culture, parents never really came to the arcade like that. So they never knew we were playing this game and I think even if they did show up, nobody really care because you know parents at work you at the arcade you ain't bought nobody you find just stuck you know they just get mad because we're spending all our money of course you know stuff like that but this game came out we used to kill this game you either playing with sub-zero or scorpion those were the two guys you were playing with growing up because you want to hit them with that spear uppercut combo or you hit them with that ice ball uppercut and slide combo with sub-zero man but it was good times good time Soon after Mortal Kombat came to the arcade, the weapons-based Time Killer was released. This game was very similar to Mortal Kombat. With the blood and gore, you got characters from different eras fighting each other to the death. And at the end, they get to fight, well, defeat death. You know, life versus death, okay? 
What made this game stand out the most was back then you could dismember your opponent's limbs and even take them out mid-fight with either the right timing or stunning them. You could literally win a match with no arms if you were good. Time Killers came out a month after Mortal Kombat's release, so it was completely overshadowed by Mortal Kombat. But we did play the heck out of this in the arcades. It was supposed to get a release on the SNES and Genesis early on, but it was scrapped due to the violence, which of course is normal today. It would be nice to get a remake of this game, bring this game back, you know, into the modern era, okay? It was, it was a pretty dope game. You had some pretty crazy characters on there. You know, you had the guy Wolf and Rancid and Orion. It was Orion and Laura. Wolf was my two guys, you know, playing with those guys. Those were my guys, you know. So it was crazy. You know, you're sitting in the middle of the match trying to fight, and you take off somebody's arm, and then you're trying to, you know, fight <laughs> fight on with your arm gone, or you press, you press all five because they had five buttons. Head, left arm, right arm, left, okay, all the limbs, okay. And you push them all, that's how you would do the super attack to kill them, take them down mid-match, okay? It was it was very, that was part was very unique. It was crazy about that. You don't really see that too much in fighting games these days, you know? Not a lot of them, but back then, it was like awesome, man. It was to kill it, this, this game, okay? It was a really, really good game. Like I said, it was just one of those games that maybe you need to get a remake of this or a remaster. A remake, not a remaster. I'm tired of remasters, okay? Get a remake of this. Maybe bring the characters into the modern era and see how it does, okay? These are the first fighting games in my lifetime that I've played. These are the games that made me fall in love with fighting games from day one until now. So now I want to hear from you. What fighting game started you off on your path to fighting game greatness? Sound off in the comments. Let's talk about it. Thanks for watching my video. Stay tuned for more episodes of my fighting game lifetime. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. And as always, gaming is purity. Peace.